Hey everyone, welcome to my movement journal. This is just a place for me to write down, to draw out the different experiences that I've had with these movements. Um, I'm currently a movement trainer and a martial arts trainer. I used to be a competitive boxer turned martial arts enthusiast. The movement we're going to talk about today is the horse stance. This is something I've had a lot of experience with, especially lately. I used it a long time ago. It kind of fell out of my routine. And now it's coming back. It's making a big comeback for me, which is why I'm putting it on the movement journal. And the reason for this is my first love, besides martial arts and movement, is easily art. And that requires me to sit for long periods of time. This has a real negative effect on my hips. I tend to get, uh, my, my hips tend to get out of balance. It tends to affect my lower back. And if you have any experience with these things, you know that this can affect the entire body and it certainly affects your performance. So the horse stance was something that was recommended to me by a friend. They did a martial art that required a lot of kicking. Of course, it, back when I first tried this, I was a boxer. I didn't need to kick. But it did help me. It helped build an internal stability in my hips, something something deep. It wasn't like the exercises I was doing. And don't get me wrong, I love, I love squats, I love bridges, I did a lot of these exercises and they help a lot. But this did something very different for me. This really built an internal, deep core strength in me. Uh, I would recommend it to anybody who has to sit for long periods of time because it's great for working out the issues and the imbalances that come with sitting for long periods of time, office work, art. Uh, in particular, I would recommend it to fighters. My main experience, although I now do a number of martial arts, but my main experience was with boxing. And in competitive boxing, the deep strength, especially the deep tendon strength that this gave me, added tremendously to my power. Tremendously. Uh, I had once heard that Jack Dempsey had trained himself for power by getting a shed that was only five feet tall, and then he would duck down and he would do all of his heavy bag work and his shadow boxing in this short little shed. This required him to get down into what we would essentially call a squatted position, a real deep squatted position. And through that, he felt it really increased his power. And if it's anything like what this did for me, I completely believe it. So let's go ahead and talk about what you do when you actually get into the horse stance. Now, you don't have to do the traditional kung fu horse stance, although that's what I'm drawing here. And that's what I'll talk about. But you can easily do this movement without drawing your arms back and your fists back into the traditional kung fu stance. And you don't have to get into the kung fu stance. You don't have to get into the horse stance the way that I'm going to talk about. But the traditional way to get into the horse stance is to stand with feet about shoulder width apart. Put the weight onto the balls of your feet up near your toes. And then you're going to turn your heels out. And then you're going to put the weight on your heels and then you're gonna turn the balls of your feet out. You're gonna repeat that a few times. Each one of those is a step. Five steps gets you into the traditional horse stance. Now some people go as high as seven and nine. I don't usually use these, although occasionally I did. Uh, some things to remember when you're doing this. Make sure you keep your back straight and learn to sit down into your hips. By sitting down into your hips, what I mean is when you get down there, and now of course if you're new at this, you're gonna have some strength issues. But besides the burn you feel in your quads and possibly your hamstrings and your glutes, when you get down into this position, there's going to be a point where your tendons, real deep in your groin, in your, uh, in your hips, in your pelvic area, you're going to feel the tendons start to tighten. They're going to find a spot where they just reach an equilibrium and they're comfortable just kind of sitting back. And they tend to take more of the pressure than the muscles do. That's one reason that this becomes such an excellent exercise for power for fighters because it increases the tendon strength in there. If you want power in this, just sit in this for 60 seconds at a time. Long isometric contractions. Absolutely perfect for building this tendon strength. And if you know anything about power, tendon strength is huge for power, especially as you age. Little known fact, but muscle power decreases as you age. It's just gonna happen. It's, it's the way it works. But tendon power in general does not. That's why you see some of these uh, 80, 90 year old Kung Fu masters or uh, Dan and Asano, I don't know if any of you have met him in person. That guy, I don't know, he, he must be 140 years old. I'm, obviously, I'm exaggerating. But that guy can still hit. He still has power. And I, he doesn't have that much muscle. It's tendon power. Okay, I'm getting off on a tangent. To get back to the horse stance. So make sure you're sitting. You find that equilibrium, that point, and hold it there for a while. Now, 
the traditional Shaolin Kung Fu horse stance, you can see I've drawn here how they pull their fists back in towards their sides. This is so that you can draw the shoulders back. Um, this allows you to straighten your spine, building a strong central core. It allows you to keep your shoulders back, uh, keeping good posture. These are things that they try to train in while they're doing this, kind of like an added bonus. Uh, I would recommend it, but again, you don't have to do that if it's uh, if it's not particularly useful to your training or if you just feel silly doing it. Hey man, if feeling silly is a big issue to you, so be it, whatever. Something else to keep in mind here is that the Eastern martial arts are big on uniting the mind with the body. I found this to be incredibly useful in my training. And the way I would do this is I would bring my internal awareness. I would bring my awareness. Sometimes I would even close my eyes. I wouldn't be listening to music. I would be sitting there with myself, getting this horse stance, and I would pay really close attention to how I felt on the inside, in particular my hips, my pelvis, and my spine, my central column. And I found a lot of things that needed tweaks that I just never would have noticed had I not been paying that close attention. But by bringing my awareness in, I was able to, I was able to alter these things slightly to find that that equilibrium within my hips that I was telling you about. It really panned out well for me. It really worked well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this finish running out real quick. Let this video finish playing. If you guys enjoyed this or feel you got any useful tips out of it, go ahead and hit like or subscribe so you can see more. There's plenty more to come. If you would like a copy of the final version of this movement journal drawing, I'll just leave a link down below to my website. You can go ahead and go there, get on my blog. I'll have a... Uh, a somewhat high resolution copy of it. You can just go ahead and copy, paste it, download it, do whatever you like. Hope it helps. Have a good one, guys.